Hello, fellow compatriots, and welcome to yet another video. Uh, t before we get into the video, I want to go ahead and announce that this is that I will be showcasing all the stuff in relation to ascending deaths. I'm going to be showcasing that after uh, the montage when it comes to BrickCon and stuff like that. It was an amazing experience. Definitely enjoyed it. So, uh, a lot of faces, chatted with a lot of people. It was honestly one of the most funnest experiences I've ever had. So, despite that, uh, well, honestly, the video will explain for itself, but I had a lot of fun. Um, a few people even commented to me, even recognizing me from Discord, which was a surprise. Uh, so, so that was cool. That was cool. Definitely going to go to, to BrickCon again next year. Um, it was a great experience. Might even reserve a table or something like that. But we'll go ahead and cross that bridge when we get there. But other than that, thank you. And let's get right into it, shall we? Hello, everybody. This is your host, Ruby here. And right now, I'm here at BrickCon. Today, we have here a lot. Of cool stuff here today. Like, like look at this black song shit, for example. Like, that is wild, honestly. The level of detail is honestly amazing on these models. I can only imagine how long it took to make these things. So look at that. Look at that. Yeah, I ended up coming a little bit late. There was so much traffic. It was so much traffic. This feels like it's from a space battleship Yamaha. Yama. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that old anime. Yeah, it was like a gray and red ship from what I recall. I'm gonna go ahead. about that, our first Bionicle cool here today. This is the technique for how the arm construction is done. It's pretty neat. Using Turox's mask to create a smooth scene for the armor plating on the forearm. Oh, 
is huge. It is <laughs> oh, that is so cool. I love that. That is very impressive. So which ones did you do? All these? Okay. No trips for so how long have you been like mocking building all these like since about 2010 or so I've been building at this level. Before that, that I was a crap builder. <laughs> we all start off at that point. Um, uh, out of all these mecha that you have built and designed, which one would you say is by far one of your most favorite? Um, probably that guy. He was like a I worked on that thing for like 10 years, trying to figure things out. I uh, kept doing brick-built cockpits. And when they came out with that cargo plane set, uh, that was just kind of the nexus for the build. I, I decided, well, I'll try that thing. I got Once I got the nose landing gear to retract, it was on from there, man. And I, I fit, was able to finish it off. It's very impressive how you put like a very clunky and large like piece that's typically has like one purpose and you right. were able to reintegrate that and turn it into something else entirely. Not a lot of people can do that, which is quite an accomplishment. Uh, what is your name? My name? What is your name? Bill McCallum. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure, man. He's actually a pretty good YouTuber. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I noticed it's getting a lot smaller over the years. It used to be a lot bigger when one of the moderators from, I think, BZ Power used to contribute a lot. And then she ended up dropping out. Another Bionicle builder ended up dropping out. So a lot of these are, like, I think by two builders, two or three builders, who Ooh. will usually always bring out the Bionicle. And they also, last night, they, like, bring a bag of Galador. Like, yeah. just tons of Galador parts. And we'll just turn around and <laughs> and make fun That's of them, and throw them around, which, I don't know if they like that, but... It happens with the Honestly, guys. like, that's what they deserve for bringing Galador into the equation. Yes, yeah, it's, it's something. Oh yeah? There's, uh, yeah. there's also, the Also, I noticed, like, a few of these are resin plastic parts. Is that, like, something you see frequently in you know, most of these builds? Like, a lot of some, previous some people do resin plastic. Yeah, there's no strict saying that you can't... It's like, I think the main rules are like, it has to not be like knockoffs. But you can make your own custom stuff. I mean, people use brick arms guns. My Hailfire droids in Star Wars use 3D printed wheels. So like, you know, you can kind of play around with how you present it. Some of the cloths tend to be like custom sometimes. And yeah. Some the capes and stuff are like probably just cut out fabric and then whatever. Yeah. I wish like Bionica, would, like Lego would have made like more Tapes and stuff for Bionicle. Yeah, they only made like one. 
think. Yeah, one only two. one, only one. Technically two, if you count like the combiner set that was released, the Hard Ass Dragon, but other than that, like hardly much. Yeah, but thank you. You're welcome. I mean, I'll be around. I mean, Zach, you probably will see him somewhere. Oh yeah, I'm sure he I'll find him. He's going to a sports bar because the Seahawks game right now. So yeah. Yeah, he's floating. And then there's actually a bunch of people from Lego Masters that are just hanging out. So I'd try to see if you can catch one of them as well. All right, I'll keep my eyes peeled. Thank you. All right, you're on. So, see ya. As you could have probably tell, I ha do not have the best of cam when it comes to camera work. Like, camera work was not the best. I was thinking about getting a selfie stick, but I had like no time. I really needed to finish off this mask and the second part to it, but I couldn't finish the second part to it. So that really ate up a lot of time when it came uh, to the mask that you see here, right here, and now. Um, other than that, though, um, I did meet a whole bunch of people. And the thing is, I was waving around a camera. And I'm not so sure if some people would mind being on camera or if others not wanted to be on camera. So that was also something that I was fiddling about. And so the safest bit for me the entire time I was at the convention being a freaking nerd is that I did not, <laughs> that it's best to go ahead and videotape all the builds, all the mocks, especially the Bionicles. So, because I did not know. I, I, I honestly did not <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry! <laughs> uh, but other than that, you know, I had a great experience. I, I'm sorry that my camera work wasn't the best, but I did see some builds, and as you notice, I was lingering around the Bionicle mocks that they had over there for a while. It wasn't a lot, and as you have heard, there were only like two builders, so I'm definitely going to try to fill in that pool. I highly recommend if you're going to be going to BirdCon next year, go ahead, bring your Bionicle. We need more Bionicle. Uh, met a lot of new people. I miss Zach, Lego Mation Suits. I missed him just barely. Just barely. He was in the building, but I missed him. Uh, which I was hoping he might have recognized me because I have the mask. I have the mask in white. My prowess, my energy, but. I did was lugging around a whole book bag full of stuff for the convention because I didn't set up at a table at the time so I decided you know I'm gonna walk around with all my stuff and I do have the stuff that I will showcase including some new ascending depth stuff I have a whole baggie full of ascending depths and the trademark blue slash white a blue and white trick the jump blue and white trick the jump blue and white blue and white blue and white blue and white baby baby blue and white blue and white blue and white blue and white, blue and white. <laughs> uh, okay so let's go ahead and take a look see so in the big green we have this piece over here it's a very nice piece and I think I got some CCBS here. Hold on. There we go. We got a CCBS. You know, just a regular CCBS. But look at that. Shake it! And even if you grab it like this, shake like a mama. Shake like a mama. Uh, it don't move, and you can still close it. 
Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, oh, and also the pinholes. Pinholes. You know what you can do with pinholes? You can shove stuff in pinholes. Check this out, check this out, check this out. It goes in. It's in now. And it's very tight and very snug. It, it's snug. It's not tight, it's snug. You can do, still do twisty twisty. Still do the twisty twisty. It's nice and snug. But yeah, that new torso for the Mark III of Terrace. Now let's see what else we have in the Bagaloon. We have another one. I had a, quite a few of them because I was thinking about giving some away to Scorpion. Here's the pelvis from uh, Mark II. And as you can see, sockets. And I fixed the tolerances, so tab, shake. Oh, it, it wobbled a little bit. Hold on, that that one's loose actually. Holy cow, why is that loose? Um, but, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, the other socket is good. So a little bit of floor polish, and that will be exquisite. Also, we do have another. Now this is also from the Mark II. Let's see, I really like this piece. This is one of my favorite pieces that I have made. Honestly, in, in my honest pieces, honest pieces, <laughs> honest opinion actually, honest opinion. This is by far one of my favorite pieces that I have made. Um, I have other intentions for it, but as of now, this is like state now I do have want some others and other covers mainly uh, a light charcoal they, they're a little scuffed though these these ones are a little bit scuffed they don't look as pretty as the blue ones so I'm sorry but I tried but yeah no that wasn't the only thing that I brought with me I brought plastic, my own plastic that I have vented, and a trademark blue and white, 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 but yeah, I got the blues, I got the white, and let, let's get this one out. And they, it is plastic, I can confirm. So you see, there's this little piece over here. I'm gonna put this down. And it's plastic. Let me get a bigger, bigger chunk from, this is a king's cut over here. Uh, Yo, plastic! Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? You like it? Isn't it cool? I got something cool as well, some whites. This is what I was hoping to show in the convention, but we're doing it in video instead. It's okay, this is um, a, a strip cut. <laughs> Because it's strip cut, you, you can still, you bend it a little bit more easier because it is a strip cut. Um, it's a little bit more difficult in the hopper because it is a strip cut and not a king's cut. Uh, but, and those are two terms that I invented. The, those are my terms. I made my own terms for the type of plastic that I cut. There's different ways of cutting it. There's the king's cut and then there's the uh, the strip cut there's two different types king's cut is a little bit more better because you get more density but the production type is a lot longer it's a longer production time um while stripper cut is 
a lot more quicker at the cost of um, being a little temperamental. And we got a darker, darker blue. So here's the one blue and then there's the other. You can see the difference. See, one's a little bit darker than the other. But it's, it, this is a stripper cut. Someone called it spaghetti. And you can also call it spaghetti. The spaghetti cut. Though, I, I don't know. This doesn't have a good ring to it. Neither the stripper cut. Maybe we should call it spaghetti cut. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. You prefer the stripper cut or the spaghetti cut? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I remember when I drew these two. Absolutely. You can see the better quality images over on my Twitter. If you want to go ahead and check that out. Uh, but this is green. Uh, a character that I invented. Uh, I might not put her in Ascending Deaths. It wasn't my intention. But she's so so charming. So wholesome. Uh, loves nature. I like her so much that I even drew a third image of her. This vibe being the forest. And speaking of which, that's the other piece of artwork that I made. You can also find it on Twitter as well. I'm going to be posting it on Instagram and a few other places. Uh, these are some like early concepts of Terex when it came to the body design. Oh gosh. I, oh man. How am I going to cover this? Uh, I'm going to need to cover... I don't want to put too many, too many spoilers. Um, this is going to be like a tease, if anything. Uh, but look at this picture here. Don't look at the other one. Just, just, just. There we go. And that's Terex, fully drawn. Uh, and that, the proportions on this one, I decided to keep. I really liked it, how it was shaped up and looking like so. That's what I thought Terex could look like if when completely finalized. I'm gonna do some other characters as well, you know, but not a lot. Ah, the Mark III. Mark III flying crab. I came out with some ideas when it came to the flying crab that I really like and enjoy. So, yeah, flying crab and Mark III. And there will be some more Rahi. I will not showcase like too much when it comes to the Rahi. Huzu! Uh, I showed Huzu already, but you know. Oh, here's another artwork piece. The Red Star. Uh, based off of Bionicle, obviously. Oh, okay. You know what? We're gonna. Sh I'm gonna show you this one because I really liked how it turned out. A new Rahi. A new Rahi that I have invented. Now this is gonna be by far one of the most creepiest creatures I have made for Ascending Depths. If the crab wasn't creepy, this is creepier. Um, things are going to be a lot more brutal, a lot more savage. Uh, but other than that, it's going to be pretty good. All in all. Yeah. This is going to be a pretty wild creature. Now, it has no eyes. It uses... It relies solely on smell and, and sound. Like, so, it can navigate itself perfectly fine without the need of eyesight. Like, it can be able to perceive everything that's around it through, solely through just hearing and scent alone. Doesn't even need to touch you. By far one of the most creepiest. And I have more that are a lot more creepier than this one. Uh, but that's... I, I was mainly sh showing you this one because I really liked how I drew it. So it's like, okay, this I have to show. Even though I shouldn't show too much. But you know what? I'm going to be showing it because, like, 
And yes, because it's covered in like a fur-like type of texture, that confirms, yes, these by ascending death sets will have fur on them in some cases. So there will be parts where you actually see the fuzz and tufts of fur. Actual like artificial fur, artificial, you know, so that we can avoid anybody that has any allergies or anything like that. Completely fabric, artificial, synthetic, synthetic hair and all that stuff like that. Okay, you're good to go. <laughs> oh, that's the comics. I don't want to show, show comics just yet. That's comics. I don't know why I brought the comic. Oh yeah, because I have the early artwork. Okay, you know what? I technically did show them on the Kickstarter, so I'm gonna show this one. So this is a new mask that I made. This is around the time when I decided, you know what? I'm not gonna go ahead and make digital art. I'm just gonna just sketch and shade and everything. And this is one of the new masks that I invented. Um, that's gonna be in Ascending Depths. And my hand is there for a reason because I have the name of the mask as well as the power of that mask. So I'm not going to be revealing that anytime soon, but that is one mask that I invented. Looks really good. Okay. Let me cover the, the information the best I can. And then the new mask, another new one that I made, which is this one over here. I had to go ahead and draw a different side of it because I actually did need a side profile in how I'm going to be recreating this mask. So there's that. Fairly impressive, I would think. And yeah, it did have a CCBS connection on the top of the head, so they will allow some customization so you can make different types of masks with the main mask. I think we're good to go, so if you like this video, why not leave a like, and if you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe, but other than that, I hope you all enjoyed, and like always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.